is Ron Ecker, and uh, I kind of host this little show that we put on. Uh, you'll see the sign before uh, I come on, uh, you know, with the music and saying it's Bas Basketball Talk Pro. It's always Basketball Talk Pro. We did that for uh, almost six years. By the way, there are 437 videos all dedicated to coaches training on YouTube. Uh, as of yet, I have not made them private. So you're welcome to take a look. They're all there. If you go on and get in my channel, that's what they call it, you'll see them all. Uh, they're all right there. It's very easy. But it's just as easy to go to www basketballtalkpro.com and go to the archives. They're all in there also. Today I want to start by asking you uh, this. I'm looking for somebody to help me. And uh, I think it would be a, a pretty rich experience uh, for anybody that uh, wants to be in the basketball field. <clears throat> as a coach, as a player, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, or as an administrator, um, it, it, because I can uh, uh, walk them through a lot of steps and just hanging around <coughs> and hearing phone calls and talks and stuff like that. They'll pick up a lot of basketball uh, savvy, uh, so to speak. <coughs> I've got a little bit of a cough, so. But I don't have the virus. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, about that. Today we're going <clears> to <throat> go over what I call five steps to ultra skill or mastery. Those two words could be uh, uh, could be used in common. Uh, the the reason for the ultra skills is that I don't believe as coaches and players that we uh, bring ourselves to the highest possible level of skill. We stop way short. We leave a lot of skill to, uh, on the table that players could gain and coaches could gain in their own, uh, their own profession. The five steps are right above my head. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, <clears throat> It's, uh, and I'll take it, I'm going to take them one by one, and you should take them one by one. <clears throat> Don't worry about time. The kind of skill that I'm talking about is not going to happen in a week or a month or a year. The ultra skill is going to be a long ways away. You have to dedicate yourself to that. Uh, you have to let time pass so that you get enough time to take each step will take you one step higher in skill uh, but it's time the early part you can get in a season uh, but the later part where all of the magic is uh, it's going to take you some time and just be prepared for that don't uh, don't uh, 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 underestimate uh, the amount of time you're going to have to put in. But I have never seen a great player, uh, and I mean this seriously, that it doesn't do what we're going to talk about today. The, the amount of practice time that they put in uh, is remarkable. But they know that in order to uh, perform at the highest level that they uh, want to, hire, to perform at, uh, they have to put in hours of, of uh, practice. Uh, and the good ones do, the great ones do. Uh, so you make up your mind. If you don't want to le reach that height, you don't have to put in as much time. But we're hoping that you will put that much time more than you are now uh, into your coaching career because who benefits from your education, your knowledge, uh, your work? It's just the players. 
Yeah, I know the school, the owner, I know all of that. But uh, truthfully, the players benefit the most because you're in a position with knowledge to, c to correct them correctly and see things correctly and point things out to them uh, correctly. But they have to do the work. Well, the steps are up here. Uh, the f very first one is what we all have to do. Uh, introduction. We use that term. Uh, this is when we get them together. It doesn't make any difference, by the way, whether you're talking to an individual, you're talking to uh, a team that's running a drill, you're talking to your team about setting up an offense, uh, or a, uh, a situation, or a defensive situation. Uh, these are the, the, the types of skills we're talking about. We're not just talking about individual skill. In fact, in my book, it's the lowest on the, on the totem pole. It's the team effort, the team skills, that really make the difference uh, in your record, uh, the team's record, and actually the individual itself, because they're thriving and seeking something uh, with, their, uh, with their buddies, with their teammates. Uh, and that, that really uh, expands uh, your knowledge, uh, that feeling of being with a group and pushing each other. Uh, to, to the highest possible uh, place you can go. You, you, there are teams that have, uh, would be the same as a master or ultra skill, but they have been coached very carefully and they have been uh, together uh, uh, some time. But the introduction is where it all starts, and that's the very simplest part. Explain what it is. I'm going to, to show you a drill on the next one and, and walk you through a lot of this that we're talking about today. Explain it to them, but show it to them. Uh, seeing is better for them than just an explanation. A lot of them aren't going to listen to you anyway. But uh, get to, whether it's an offense or whether it's an individual skill or, or a, a drill, they need to see what it looks like if done correctly. Now, you don't have to demonstrate it as a coach. I did most of my career, but I don't anymore. Uh, you can use an assistant. You can use a player. Uh, and just walk them through so they can visually see what you want them to do. And then try it. Go ahead. Let's say the drill we we're running yesterday, tomorrow, I will show it, I will explain this again. Uh, give it a try. You know, correct, but be careful with your corrections. Uh, don't overdo them. Just say it in a few words, you know, you should do this. Okay, that's correct. What you're doing is incorrect. Something to, like that. Just let them know. They have to know when they're wrong, by the way. They have to know when they're right. If only, you're only telling them what they do wrong, uh, they still don't know what right is until you tell them, Jim, that was right. You did that just right. Uh, that means more to the learning process than uh, corrections. This particular uh, part of the, of the steps, the first step, uh, doesn't take as long because that's all you're accomplishing. But, but don't just tell them maybe even show them and then just think they can run it. Let them have a chance. Let them have a chance to make mistakes. Let them have a chance to feel what it feels like uh, to, to get involved in this. They don't have to be perfect. 
Just let them be. If they're doing something that's just going to be hurtful, harmful to the team or to you, to the individual, just correct them uh, pleasantly. Uh, not, as a, not growling at them or even screaming at them. I go to a lot of co uh, practices ever since I started coaching. I went to practices. Uh, and so I've seen all kinds of, uh, from high school up to the NBA, uh, and, and uh, the different approaches by coaches. I have come to the conclusion that being a little gentle and more uh, instructive in this, coaches tend, and I don't mind telling you this, I have to tell you this if I'm doing my, my part of the job, uh, coaches get carried away with their own voice and their own showmanship. It's, it's okay to have a little glitter uh, to what you're doing. Uh, but when it becomes, here am I, look at what I know, and I'm going to tell you, uh, that, that's ego. You're satisfying uh, your sense of need for approval. Uh, that isn't what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be helping your players get better. Uh, and so uh, keep that in mind. Don't over, overwork it. The second step is learning. Now learning is just what it says. You're, you're learning how to do the skill or drill or whatever uh, as, uh, at, at, in this next step. It, but learning takes a, time, a, a little time. This does not mean that you have it all done, that mean that you're smooth, but it will look like it. To some players, it'll, that just seem to have the grace and everything, it'll look like, well, they know it. They don't know it yet. Enough time hasn't passed uh, for them to know it. They are not in a position, no matter how they look, in their second step is not what you want them to bring to the game because that's a higher level of skill that is required. Right now you're just learning uh, the skill. Uh, this, this will take a little more correction uh, probably. Uh, give them a lot of room. Give them some room to feel their way along. But don't accept sloth. Uh, you know, don't, don't let it get to be sloppy because they're just feeling it out. Don't, I don't want that. I don't want you to th have that. Uh, but I don't want you either uh, to over, overdo everything. Give them time. Let them, let them work through things. But here's, at this step, is a couple of things you have to start bringing to them. You don't have to expect them to be able to do it, but start working on it. Because you've got a lot on the two I'm going to tell you, you, you have to, you're going to have to be very, very good until you don't have to think about these things anymore. Tell them not to predetermine what they're going to do tomorrow when we do the drill or the next day, uh, I, I will go through this again. But I'm just telling you, start to get into it, you know, and you, you can do it as a team, you tell them as a team, uh, whatever it is, uh, you know, don't predetermine pre what you're going to do. Because the next thing we want you to add to that is uh, a word that uh, is very important in this, uh, in this um, segment, uh, and that is feeling. We want your players to start feeling what to do. I, I went through this, uh, and in the book I go through it, uh, that uh, this is how you do things in basketball. We have a fast game. We make tremendous amount of split-second decisions. How do we do that? Not by thinking. You do it by feeling. You feel what you should do. 
it, at first you won't have that feeling, but the more you practice it and the more you work on it, you will get to, to it's like almost like a gong going off in your head. Uh, the, the feeling you have is so strong. And then you don't question that feeling. You do it because, and I will tell you what I tell every team, you never make a mistake here. You don't have, you don't have time to worry about mistakes. Do it. And next time, your, your brain, as I tell, told you in the first group, will start to realize what, you're, what you want and what you need. And they will keep you. They will take that, they, they operate on feelings, by the way, those cells that, were, that go flow, flying through your body. But, but the, the last word on this, this area, and we'll start getting it to the players, is practice. Practice, practice, practice. Repeat, repeat, repeat. I'll say it here about boredom. So coaches have a fear that they're boring their players. That isn't what you're, what you're there to do. You're not there to entertain them. You're there to bring them up to another level. And the real hard working and the God of the great players, they want that. Uh, they don't want uh, to, you know, have, it has to be fun. They don't want to get better. Uh, but boredom is strange. Now, I, I don't know how many years I've been doing the drill. I'm going to show you more. It's, it's 30 or 40, uh, 40 years. So I've been through all of these, these phases that we're talking about. Uh, it, it, it's fun to watch them. They're bored. Uh, We've got to run this again. Why are we doing this and all that? Pretty soon you keep doing it, you keep doing it, and they realize we're just going to keep doing it, so we might as well uh, find out something. Pretty soon they start to, uh, to uh, find different little nicks that they can use to make it more effective. And it starts to become fun for them. It's fun. It's not a, a drudgery anymore. They're not bored. They're kind of excited about uh, how they can do, how they can make the cut here, or how they can make the pass there. Uh, it becomes, and then, when they're having success, they really begin to feel, this is fun. This is the way the game should be played. Well, the next step is where we, uh, where you really test yourself as a coach. And that is the next step, step number three is skill. Now you have a degree of skill, but it's a degree. It isn't that, you know, the degree could go from zero to ten. It won't be ten uh, when you first get into this, uh, uh, this uh, step uh, three, uh, but it, it, it should be one or two at least. And, and, and you're going to have to spend some time here to get them to 10. And that means you keep running it. You keep repetition. You keep practicing. But also you keep alert. Coaches, the coaching things I, I see that are the most uh, problem is attention by the coach. The coach loses attention. You've got to be attentive every second. Uh, that's your job. That's how you can help these guys. Not by, you know, seeing what's on your cell phone or who's in the, in the gym with you or anything like that. Just making sure you're involved with them as much as you want them involved with you. This is the part where it all starts to pay off. Now here is also the part where you have to become, now th this might be a year from, from, from now, but it's still there. Uh, this is where you have to start picking out the things that we're trying to get through. I, if you watch the first one, I gave you a story on the gap. Uh, this is where you start to train them to realize and 
perfect uh, playing, uh, making a reaction uh, in the in the gap. Three things you want your players to have in when you're in skill. The first one is relaxed attention. In other words, you are attentive, you're focused, but your you mind and body are 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 relaxed. Um, relaxation needs confidence. You cannot be relaxed in what you're doing unless you're confident that it's, that it's uh, you can do it uh, and that you have faith. Even if the faith is not in a material way, uh, as you saw in the first uh, shots by the, the, the archer, uh, I mean, his, his shots in his mind, and maybe years, uh, uh, required uh, 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 intense uh, confidence, uh, but it's relaxed. Uh, when you can attain that with your players, the players can attain it, uh, you have something really, really good and strong. And pushing again, correcting, pointing out, feeling. Don't let them get away from this. Let, let, make it a point that always you're, you're trying to, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, activate something uh, that you just feel. And, and you have to practice that. Uh, you have to uh, be very uh, aware of it. And non-thinking. If you saw the first one, if you haven't seen that first one, you should go back and look at it on, on YouTube. Uh, and because it shows exactly what we're talking about here and what can be done if you stop thinking uh, and, and just do it and with confidence and attention. The fourth one is uh, automatic and how you are getting into uh, the Michael Jordans and Kobe Bryants and LeBrons. Uh, most of the things they do is automatic. Uh, they see and, they, and automatically they apply uh, non-thinking. Uh, they're not thinking and they apply confidence. They don't have any doubt in their mind that they're, what they're doing is what they should do and they have faith that it's going to work. Now you're getting into really uh, the beginning of greatness. If that's what you want as a player, that if you want as a coach, uh, now you're starting, but believe me, this will take, uh, take a while. Um, again, you're, you're, we're talking about that constantly make, uh, uh, having them think about, not think about so much as using feeling and don't predetermine what you're going to do. What you're going to do in the future may not be your future. Uh, in other words, you think, well, the last time that guy went over the screen, this time I'm going to back cut him. Yeah, well, this time he isn't going over the screen because he might have gotten bumped or whatever, and so you back cut right into him. Uh, make your decision in the second you see something, make it now. Don't hem and haw and think, well, wait a minute, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe the coach will get mad. Maybe my teammates won't. Maybe I'll look silly to my girlfriend up there and the wife. Uh, those thoughts, you've got to get rid of them. And if you stay with the program, by now, maybe three, four years, uh, I don't want to discourage you, but it takes time. Uh, all of a sudden, you have it. You won't even know it. You won't even think about it. And you just... You just have it. Mastery or the ultra skill, uh, skill beyond 
any range of, of, uh, of, of ability is when you can call upon it at any time. It's available to you any place, any time you need it. It may be in a, a swerving to miss a car. Uh, to you know, it may it can come up in many ways. But in the game, you're going to have a lot of different ways that it's coming to you. You have to be so trained by yourself that uh, you do it without even a thought. It's just automatic. You don't have to think. You do this all the time in your life. How many of you think about walking? That's automatic. That's what we're talking about here. Uh, and you have a lot of skills, tremendous skills, uh, that you don't even think about. You know, uh, you might be on the edge of a, a stairway and all of a sudden you lose your balance, you're going to go tumbling down, and somehow your hand has noticed a little bitty lump over here you can get your fingers on. You grab it without even looking at it or seeing it, and it saves your life. I wonder, I'd like to see a count of, of, uh, of what everyone goes through in their lifetime, how many times they have saved their life, not them, but their automatic skills which they do a lot of practice in, uh, just every day. I mean, you go up the, stair, the stairs, uh, maybe many, many times in a day. Oh, that's practicing. Uh, and it becomes automatic after a while. You don't think about, it. you know, I got to put my left foot here. Uh, it, you just go up the steps. It just flies by. Well, that's it for today. The next thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to go through a, um, a drill. A drill that, by the way, I picked purposely for this group is that uh, it's, uh, it's an ideal drill to learn the th steps that I just took you through. Uh, and, uh, and you can run it forever. Uh, listen, I run this drill for 30 years and I run it all year long. Uh, and, and our players become more uh, automatic with their, their reactions uh, and more confident in their reactions. So that's it, and I'll see you next time. I hope you come to the next one. By the way, the book, The Intelligent Coach, has all of this and in more detail. So you need I would like you to get that, uh, that book. And uh, by next time, I'll explain to you where we're eventually going. Have a good day.